So this 4th of July, Sunday, Independence Day, it's the 30th anniversary of the Cap- a Capitol 4th, the annual concert uh, in the United States Capitol. And one of the featured performers this year happens to also be a Teen Choice nominee for Favorite American Idol alum. That would be David Archuleta. Hi, David. Hey. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. How about you? I'm very well, thank you. Just the sound of your voice makes me smile. I appreciate that. (laughs) Oh, thanks. (laughs) How did this all come about with you being a part of a Capital Fourth? I was invited to come perform, I think last month or sometime, and they asked me to sing the national anthem. And, I, I, you know, I always feel it's a real privilege to get to sing that song, but I feel especially for this event on the 4th of July and an event as extravagant as this is a real a real privilege. I'm really excited, and they also asked me to sing Stand By Me. Oh. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this upcoming 4th of July Sunday. So it'll be on PBS, and it, I think it starts at like 8 Eastern time, but you can check local listings for um, when it will be on. But you're in Miami, right? So. Yes, and I wanted to ask you about that. You were born right here in North Miami. Um, I was. Yeah, and yeah. I, I know you <laughs> moved away when you were really young. Do you remember anything? Are you in contact with people from here at all? Uh, you know, I still have family in Florida, so I still keep in touch with them. And it's weird. I, I only lived in Florida until I was about six years old, till '97. But I have so many memories there, and I guess also because we would go back a lot to see my family. And um, I was there a few months ago during the the Super Bowl time. There was a charity event that my friend Jordan Sparks did, and it was just fun. I went and visited my old house, the first house I ever lived in. I spent a lot of time in Hialeah. Okay. But it's I have so many memories there. It's just it's where I really learned the importance of family and just keeping them close because, you know, we didn't have a lot during that time, of, but we always had family and always had my cousins and my grandparents there and, and just really learned the value of having them close to you. That's so, beautiful. I, I yeah. want to ask you more about that in a second. I'm just curious, is there somewhere that you feel compelled to visit when you're in town? Um, I guess mainly just the family my, and also the Cuban restaurants. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, every now and then we'll, we'll go to the beach, but it's mainly just kind of hanging out with the family, and we'll go to, we just do kind of normal things. We'll go to the park. Um, my mom's, because it's my mom's side of the family who's more in, in Florida, and they're actually really big baseball fans, so we'll go to their games and support them, and, and it's really just kind of casual things that we do. Okay. David, in addition to being such a great performer, you are now an author with the book Chords of Strength. It's a oh. memoir of soul, song, and the power of perseverance. What, what is that like for you? Um, you know, it was such a different process, uh, something I never imagined ever doing. Because I just thought, you know, I, I'm, not an, I'm not a writer, I'm not an, an author, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't ever really that great at English or anything. I mean, I worked hard to, you know, get, get good grades, but I was, it always took me a long time to write things and really express myself. But, you know, I think something that's really helped me with writing is journal writing. And it's really kind of helped me think, you know, I always felt like, oh, other people are keeping records and they're keeping the news articles and making scrapbooks. I was like, do I really want other people telling my story? Especially for like my kids and my grandkids and stuff. I want them to have my side and really know what was going on from my perspective of it. And so I felt like journal writing helped a lot with that. And and then the book, when that opportunity came, I, at first I felt like, well, I'm not old enough to to write a book. It mm-hmm. seems like, do I have enough to say? But I thought about it. It's like, you know, there have been a lot of opportunities that have gotten that I wasn't expecting to happen still being a teenager. You know, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm still a teenager. I'm 19. And there have been a lot of cool things that I feel like I could share that could be really helpful to other people. And also to allow people to understand where I'm coming from and why I'm doing this and why music means so much to me. And just kind of sharing the, how, you know, even though I've doubted myself a lot and have had confidence issues there's always kind of that hope that you feel that it's like you know what something can happen and even though it's like oh what if this happens or i'm not good enough for that and oh that'll never happen but it's like you know what but what if what if it does and what if you do have what it takes you don't you don't know until you try and 
trying, you know, just going for it has really been a blessing in my life. It's like, even though I didn't think I could do it, it's like I just went for it anyway. And now to look back and see where I am now and just being able to live my dream and do something I love so much that not only helps and is beneficial to me, but to see how it affects other people is such, I'm just so grateful for that. So it's, um, I guess just kind of talking about that and just talking about the power of music and how I've seen it affect other people is just really neat. So I guess I just kind of talk about that in the book and just my experience and the vocal paralysis and I guess a, a bunch of different things well, in the book. Uh, yeah, I mean, even at 19, you've had to overcome a lot to get to where you are. As you mentioned, the vocal paralysis, uh, having to deal with Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess uh, Simon can be pretty brutal at times, but he was, you know, he was pretty, he was pretty nice. I mean, he's a very nice guy, and he always had um, helpful things to say. And, you know, it was, I really appreciated the nice comments that he had to say, and, and when they weren't the nicest things, they helped encourage you. They helped motivate you to do better. What's more nerve-wracking for you, performing in front of Simon or performing in front of the President of the United States? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I actually think Simon might be a little more nerve-wracking. Okay. Just because, okay. Of the, just because of the memories of being judged and that feeling of what is he going to say, or what is he thinking? Where well, I feel like the president, he he seems like a you know a very supportive person, and I actually just met him a couple of weeks ago when I was last in Washington D.C. I was there for the Children's Miracle Network. They had a program called Champions Across America, where they brought a child from each of the 50 states who have been treated by hospitals that they support, and these kids who have gone through so much with leukemia or bone cancer and different other kinds of diseases or dog attacks or premature birth and all all these things and it these kids are amazing and it was such an experience and they they took these kids to the white house and the president came and met with everyone and it was a really special experience especially being around those kids though they they have such a spirit to them i think they've gone through so much and they really are um old souls wow. and i just look up to them so much i'm just really grateful to to have met them. It was a real honor getting to meet these kids. And it, it was like one of the highlights, it's been one of the highlights of my year. So, Which is amazing uh, to hear from someone who's been through so much in such a short time and achieved so much that that, as opposed to the money and, and the fame, that's what you, <laughs> I, that's really special. It really is. And I think that's uh, why people love you so much. Um, oh, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to direct people to your website, davidarchuleta.com, so they can get the preview of your new single, which is coming out next month. Something about love. I know that your time is limited, so I'm going to send them there, and also to find out about the album that's coming out in fall. And we'll put up the link to the book at barnesandnoble.com, where you've gotten five star reviews by everyone. So congratulations. Oh. <laughs> that's nice of people. It's yeah. Well, well, I'm glad that people like it. So. Yeah, I, I think you are an inspiring person to people, and, and they feel that from you. And, and, and one last question, what do you credit for being able to keep the kind of perspective that you have on things and, and keeping your head on straight with so much that's coming your way? You know, um, I owe so much to my family. They're, you know, they're the ones who have raised me and taught me what's important and just how to think about, you know, it's like you, it's amazing having these experiences but it's like there's a reason for them. And part of that is being able to share something you love and to see how it can it can help other people. And I also owe so much to, to God about for that. I feel like he, he is the reason why I'm doing this. I feel like he's blessed my life so much. And I feel like music allows people to become closer to him. And I feel like when I sing, I can feel that. And it's cool to know that other people can feel it because I feel like music is really contagious. And so when people are able to come up and say, thank you, simply just because you sang a song that meant something to you, is it means so much. And to see how music can make a difference, I feel like that's what really matters. You know, the, the money, it can go away. It, you don't know how long that lasts. The recognition that you can have, it's you know, the fame, I guess. You know, it's, you don't know how long that'll last, but the feeling that you can get from music and the impact and, or the simple, slight impression that it can leave on people that's what lasts forever, and I guess that's what has touched me the most, and it's been neat to see that 
music can really do good for people. So yeah. I just, I just am re- really grateful to have this opportunity. I don't know how long it will last, but I just hope to keep doing um, my best for as long as I can.